Hell up, y'all? I was popping nigglets. So, <laughs> I'm about to react to this Beyond Scare Straight from 1978. Hey, this Beyond Scare Straight is supposed to be way funnier, way crazier than all the other Beyond Scare Straights from what I hear. So, we about to hop into it. It's super long. Side note, I was actually going to put this on my Patreon. I was going to make it exclusive to my patrons because I'm like, oh, this is a really long video. I'm already reacting to long videos and TV shows and stuff over there. So, might as well put it on my Patreon. But I remembered that when I reacted to the Beyond Scare Straight from 1999, Last year, y'all was telling me to react to this one. And I'm like, oh, that would be pretty shady if I just made it exclusive to my patrons. So I'm gonna put it on, you know, this channel right here. I'm also putting it on this channel because I know ain't nobody else gonna do it. So I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Because ain't nobody gonna sit here and react to this long video but me. Even that Beyond Scare Story from 1999, I reacted to that video. Nobody else did. Nobody reacted to that video in its entirety. If you look it up reactions for that video, the closest you'll see is a dude, he reacted to 23 minutes of it. That video is over 40 minutes long. I was the only person who sat here and reacted to 40 minutes of that goddamn show. So I, I gotta do this, cause you know niggas, niggas ain't bought this reaction like, but me, all right? <laughs> so I'ma go ahead and react to this Beyond Scare Straight 1978, let's get it. This program contains explicit language. Parental oh, guidance know. is suggested. I'm in for murder. Kidnapping, robbery, Kidnapping. armed robbery, conspiracy. When we got sexual desires, who do you think we get? And don't tell me each other. See, because I don't like nothing in the first place, and I don't like you. You got your best shot, man. One punch. Punch me in my face. Then it's my turn. He ain't gonna do it. Man, get that fucking camera out of my face. I told you to cut it off. Oh, that's what the other dude did in uh, 1999, too. Going off on the camera, man. They ain't do nothing wrong. I'm Danny Glover. Danny Glover, what the what fuck? What you just saw was the beginning of Scared Straight, <laughs> a groundbreaking film that won an Academy Award in eight Emmys when it first aired 20 years ago. The original film follows 17 teenage lawbreakers who are taken inside of Rawway, New Jersey's maximum security prison. In a raw confrontation, a group of hardened convicts called the Lifers tried to literally scare the kids into going straight. <laughs> Tonight, after watching Scare Straight, we'll meet these same kids and convicts today. What's happened to them over the past 20 years? Are any of the kids in prison? Are any of the convicts out? We'll find out right after this special presentation of Scared Straight. Oh, I wanna see. Oh, so this is beyond Scare Straight. This is Scare Straight. They did beyond. This program contains explicit and coarse street language. Us. It's not intended for children's viewing. Parental guidance is advised. <laughs> These teenagers are going to prison. Nothing from arrest to rehabilitation has worked to stop them from breaking the law. So now at age 15, 16, and 17, they're going behind bars. Their sentence will be short, only three hours. But during that time, these juvenile offenders will come into direct confrontation with these hardened criminals. They call themselves the lifers. Together, they're serving nearly a thousand years. But the lifers are through taking lives. They're now saving them. In a unique crime prevention program created and run by the convicts, their goal is ambitious. Make juvenile delinquents go straight. Imagine yourself. The innocent victim of one of these youngsters. How do you feel about your victims? I don't really care. You know, whoever come, I'm gonna get them. It's a challenge. You know? Just a challenge. I take. <laughs> I feel sad about them for a while, and I forget about it. He looked like a little murderer. If you don't know the person, so I really don't think too much about it. They shouldn't have been, you know, around me at that time. You know, I just felt they'd be. I don't. I don't give a fuck about it. You know. That's what I feel about it. Today's prisons what the are fuck did they do? This ain't like Beyond Scare Straight. Beyond Scare Straight, they just did a kid issue. They up here talking about killing. I don't remember how old I was when I first got in trouble. Me? Around nine. Wow. Yeah. Around nine. Yeah. Yeah. Around six, seven. About ten. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Twelve. To be exact, twelve. Twelve or thirteen? About third grade. <laughs> 
I was eight. Friday. Monday through Friday, juvenile offenders from New Jersey and New York are sent to Rawway prison by police, judges, counselors, and probation officers. From the moment they pass through the metal detector, these young lawbreakers come face to face with the brutalities of prison. Sit over there. I don't care what it is. Sit over there. I don't care what it is. Wait over there. Get a brew in here. Sit over there. Let's go, single file, stop over here. Stop over there, they're not around here. Single file. Let's go, follow the sergeant. As the teenagers go deeper and deeper inside this maximum security prison, their arrogance and smiles fade, replaced by an enveloping uncertainty ranging from tension to terror. Look at that guy right there! Inside an oppressive and noisy cell block called the hole, prisoners locked in solitary verbally molest the young boys with verbally homosexual taunts. Get out back there too. Both of y'all some pretty Matter of fact, you look better than her. Oh. I'd rather have you in there. Oh. Lock him in here, too. You want to come in here? Look at that. Guys, live up there. Guys, live up there. Bring him in here. You want to be in my cell? You, too. Give me that one over here, too. That one over here with the big buck. Yeah, I'm going to do something real nasty to you. Let's go. <laughs> what? Let's go. Make me kiss. They have such try-hard. Somebody asked me to steal a son. I say good, you know. And I'm going into, um... Security, security school to learn all about burglar alarms and things like that. That way I know when I come out on the streets, I can disconnect alarms and take what I want. And get some braces. And in my Shop future, I think I'll be a professional thief. <laughs> Look you at that. If man. I commit a crime, how do I feel? I feel all right. You know, I commit, I'm happy, I'm gonna do it again, you know. I will take everything you have if you give me the chance. About stealing possessions and yeah. Body. Stealing possessions and hurting you, if possible. Right. Somebody killed. Like I never killed anybody, you know. Okay, but but I did slice a couple. You know, I slice somebody, you know, a couple of times. Yeah, it's pretty solid, but done. Think you could ever kill anyone? Yes, I think I can. Me myself, I don't care, cause you know they gotta catch me first. I don't figure the cops out here bad enough to catch me, you know. <laughs> Jail is like a thing they talk about to me, you know. Right. Smell the toilet bowl. See how it like smells. It smells good. the 70s. You can smell from there. Well, look at it. If you people, you come here with a one to two or a light fit, we put you in a cell of this size. And I have a good mind of keeping you here for two hours if we're going to be on this tour. Thinking that you're so tough. You ain't tough. Why well, steal from people, you know, average, in which I don't. If I steal from someone, it would be someone, if I ever did steal, like the railroad, like I've been blamed for. Because. They don't have the money right from their insurance, and they just, they're just stalling the money. It's no, it ain't hurt no one there. The worst thing I ever done was drop this store. And you right in front of me? got caught. You need the money that badly? No, it's just uh, too lazy to work. If a group's gonna do something, like, I'm the kind of person that'll probably do it, you know? Because everybody's doing it. That's just the way I am. I wouldn't rob no little old lady or nothing. Who would you rob? Somebody rich. Yeah, three girls, let's go. I think it's in there. They're all different. I like how they. Sometimes I did things when I was drunk. And I didn't worry about it. These people are really unfortunate. Stealing. Stealing. Drinking. It's like an assault and battery charge against me. What I steal, I need and I want. And I just do it to satisfy myself, not to satisfy to anybody else or to prove to anybody else that I'm no cool because it. I steal. Girl, shut up. I just do it to satisfy myself. Right. If these kids look like the innocent boys and girls next door, remember why they're here. Various youngsters in this group have committed assault and battery, arson, auto theft, breaking and entering, burglary, purse snatching, shoplifting, vandalism, possession of stolen property, possession and distribution of narcotics, illegal possession of weapons, assaulting a police officer, larceny and bomb threats. 
Their juvenile crime is hardly innocent child's play. They don't scare me. You know, they don't scare me. <laughs> I think it's going to be great going there and seeing all them burnouts. <laughs> I'm not worried about it myself, you know, because if they come to me talking, I feel I'm going to talk back, you know. I'm not going to shut up for nobody, you know, for nobody. You're here for two hours? We'll you belong here for two hours. <laughs> Anybody see these cars? Everybody see these motherfucking cars? Let me tell you something, man. When I ask a question, I want to answer from all y'all. Now, everybody see these cars. Man. You like rich boy a little bit. I want bit. you to look at one man and pass it down. I want you to see them all. Just bought a Cadillac. What is his name, rich boy? Motherfucker, what did I say? What did I say, motherfucker? Now pick them up and look at them right. <laughs> Sit the fuck back. Hurry up and pick them goddamn cards up. Yeah, they about that action. You don't get all them cards, clown? Because if I tell you don't get them, I'm going to break your fucking neck. That's just you see them all? Yeah. I'm trying to say the last time, man. The last fucking time. Don't get on my fucking nerves, all right? You look at one and pass it down to him. Look at all of them. Oh, Come on, speed up. I show you the cards for one reason. To let y'all know that we ain't no social workers, no counselors, no probation officers, or no police. We are convicts. Every man you see behind me is doing over 25 years on life. Sheesh. So y'all ain't coming here and change nothing. Now it's done understood. Yes. When a man's up here talking to you, I want your eyes on him at all times. That means if that man catch you looking at that wall, he feels as though you're chopping him off. And when you chop a person off in prison, you got to deal with the consequences. And we can get very physical up here. Mm. So we can start this now, right? They like, oh shit, what did I get myself into? I asked you a question. Yes. Yes. I ask you again, nigga. I'm gonna come over here and break your fucking neck, right? Mm -hmm. Now I ask you a question. Can we get this started? And I want to hear from all y'all. Yeah. Yes. Let's get one thing straight right from Jump Street. Ain't nobody up here entertaining clowns. You got a problem, man? Or you coming here laughing and joking? You see, look at me, motherfucker, when I'm talking. Now, you want to impress these bitches how tough you are? Oh. Any one of these. You want to impress them how tough you are? Well, impress them with me. I've been in this thing and says pool 10 years, clown, and I ain't seen nothing funny. You sit here and you seriously believe you ain't never going to jail. In the 10 years I've been here, I've seen thousands of guys come through these joints. And I ain't met anybody yet that planned to come to prison. That's the trouble with you clowns. If somebody's trying to give you something, you're about trumping them off. Where you get this half from? Like, keep trying, you jerk off. Keep trying, you man. Get up, motherfucker, you think you're to get out of here. Get him off that fucking bench. Get out of here, nigga. He's like, out here, nigga. What is happening? Come on. I'm over here. Chad, that motherfucker, man. Slide. Tighten it up. Move the fuck over, man. Move over. I'm sure some of you guys got girlfriends, right? I can't hate. They got designer shades and all that. Girls got boyfriends? I can't hate. Yeah. I know you all got sexual desires, right? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, we got sexual desires, too. We're just like you. We made of flesh and blood. You tough guy. Take a wild guess. When we got sexual desires, who do you think we get? And don't tell me each other. Who? You don't know, huh? Well, I tell you. We get young, dumb motherfuckers just like you. I got told you, I've been out here 10 years. And I'm gonna die in this stinking joint. And if they want to give me these three bitches right here, I will leap over them like a kangaroo just to get the one pretty young fat butt boy. Ew! So, mm. And not only me, there's a lot of guys in there do the same thing. Okay. It's a way of life in these joints. He looks so short. He's a little short. Man. One day you're laying on your blanket and your mind is drifting over them 30 foot walls. And you're thinking about who's with your girl. When three guys will slide into your cell, wrap your ass up in that blanket, mm. 
And I don't care how tough you think you are or how strong you might be. They're going to kick your ass over the side of that bed and do bodily harm to your asshole by sticking a dick in you. So what do you do? I'm going to give you five options you can take. And ain't none of them worth a Chinese snicker. One, you go to the cop. You say, officer, three guys just ripped me off and you come back with the cop. You say, that white guy, that black guy, that black guy. See these three guys that ripped you off? Yeah, they're going to go in a hole for 30 or 60 days. Well, and then they'll be back in population. But the administration, they know they Sorry, can't leave you in population. Little. Because one of these guys' associates will cut your ass from A to Z. So they got to do something to protect you. But right up there on the fourth tier is a place called PC, Protective Custody. We call it Punk City here in Raleigh. And that's where you will go. And if you're doing a 1 to 2, 5 to 7, 20 to 30 life bid, that's where you will do all that time. And when you're in PC, you locked up 23 out of 24 hours a day. You get out for one hour for exercise. And that's it. So see, you can't rap. But I know I got a lot of tough guys here. So when you get ripped off, the first thing you're going to want to do is get even. You're going to want to get revenge. Now, the best time to stab somebody in this joint is on a mass movement. When you got over 1,300 wild, treacherous maniacs moving like a herd of fucking cows, going out there to the yard, the mess hall, all paired to the movies. So you strap down with your shack and you go in the yard and you see one of them guys that ripped you off. So you slip up your hand, you pull your shank and you stick him. And when you stick him, you kill him. So you smart guys tell me, how much time you think the court's gonna give you for killing that man? Anybody. Life, triple life. That's right, they're gonna give you life. Not that they care about that guy you killed, or they care about you, but that's the way the system works. See, there's no such thing as getting even in these prisons. And that brings us to number three. When you get in, you get ripped off. Maybe you decide, well, I ain't gonna say nothing to nobody. I keep it to myself. But see, it don't work that way. See them three guys that ripped you off? They got associates, and their associates, they're about young boys, and they're gonna come and rip you off. And then they got associates, and they're going to come and rip you off. Why are you saying rip you off? And if you get anything from all that little right. food package or some personal clothes, somebody's going to take that too. So your thing will steady be getting ripped off. And that brings us to number four. And this is the one you're all going to take. In the ten years I've been here, I've seen it a thousand times. You're going to walk around this joint, or any joint you might be in. And you're going to find a guy that's real quiet. Nobody bothers him, and he don't bother nobody. He's got all respect in the world. You're going to approach this guy and say, hey, my man, I got a very serious problem. Can you help me? And after you run it down to him, he's going to tell you, yeah. And it seems like five minutes after he say, yeah, it's like somebody got on a PA system and told 1,300 wild maniacs not to bother you. And now you're telling yourself, hey, this guy was all right. He got all this pressure off him. But nah, he ain't did nothing. The only thing this guy did was he told population that you mm -hmm. are his property. Mm -hmm. You are his I kid. And when you become somebody's kid in one of these joints, there's the things you gotta do. You gotta get up in the morning and get his coffee. You gotta clean his cell. You gotta wash his drawers and socks. Mm -hmm. And if he wants some head, you will give it to him. Oh! If he wanna fuck you in your ass, you'll let him. Oh! If he wanna say it to another prisoner, They'll do that too. What the fuck? See, they're gonna put lipstick on your lips, earrings in your ear, no point and I'll be swishing your ass up and down these help. tears, hustling cigarettes for your man. And for you tough him. motherfuckers like you. See, when you entertain the thought of telling this guy, no, nah, man, I ain't about that bullshit. I ain't gonna do it. Well, the only thing you telling this guy is to take your life, clown. Mm. Cause that's what he's gonna do. Nah. You can take number five, and that just happened Christmas. <laughs> you probably all read about it because it was in all the papers. Young guy, he didn't mean to kill nobody. Just standing on the corner, smoking a little reefer, drinking a little wine. So he was broke but wanted to keep the party going. So he went out and snatched a pocketbook. But see, when he took that pocketbook from that little old lady, she had a heart attack and died. Oh, shit. So he didn't just have a charge of mugging. He had a whole Murder. side to go with him. And when he went to court, the judge didn't give a fat ass ass he was 16. The judge didn't want to hear what he meant to do. He just told him I'm fed up with this juvenile bullshit. Mm. And gave him life right mm. here in Norway State Prison. Damn. And he's here one week. Up. And he became somebody's kid. 
Mm. And he did that for just a little over a year. Is and then the pressure crash? made it down oh. in the morning. He's sticking joints. Crash down. So Christmas night, he went back to his cell, took his sheet, tied one end around a pipe, and all around his dumb motherfucking neck, and he hung himself. Oh. So now he's easy. He ain't got to do that life bit. He ain't got to deal with these police. And he ain't got to put up on his pimp. He went out the back door and wrapped up in a green sheet with a tag on his toe. And when they stuck his dumb ass in the ground and gave him that little wooden graveyard marker, they didn't put his name on there, they put his number. Because that's all you are when you come to somebody's prison. It's a number. You lose everything. But this is what you clowns want. Damn. I personally don't give a fat rat's ass what you do when you leave here today. But just remember this. When you get here, I'll show you better than I can tell you. Oh, you sit up. Oh, sit the hell up, man. And go for you sit up. And when I say something, I want everybody to give me an answer. You understand that? Yes. Keep your eyes on me the whole time I'm talking. Why do they have... If I decide to jump up in that goddamn suit, you better have your eyes right in the bottom of my feet. All type of shit. Slide What's your happening? goddamn ass back. Squeeze the fuck in there. I don't care if you're uncomfortable. I've been uncomfortable for four goddamn years. What the hell do I care about you being uncomfortable now? You got something in your head you want out? Because if you move your hand one more time, you ain't gonna have to worry about it because I'm gonna kick that right off the top of your goddamn head. You understand that? Mm. See, because I don't like nothing in the first place and I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like nothing. You move one more goddamn time and I'll bite your fucking nose off and spit it in your damn face. You oh. understand that? Bite your nose off. Echo for you too. So just as quick as I'll kick him in the goddamn ass, I'll do the same thing to you. Mm. Put no damn tears in your eyes. What the fuck I care about some tears? Man up, girl. Shit. All of you. All that junk you be watching on TV, that's fantasy. That's bullshit. You turn on the TV, see somebody get 20 years life, and you get up and go to the bathroom and come back day on the streets. It don't work like that in here. Mm. When you what get some time in there, you, you do that, years. And when you do years in there, you do that day for day. Week for week, month for month, and year for goddamn year. The only thing that changes in here is the goddamn calendar. Mm. But you just want to come in here. See, because every time this one of your so-called friends out there tell you, come on, let's go steal something, let's go rip somebody off, let's go mug somebody, all they're doing is saying, let's go to jail. Mm. Let's go to jail. 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 let us go to jail let us go to Twenty goddamn dollars. Twenty dollars? Come on. Now you sound like a real dummy. Dummy fuck. See, when I was on the streets, I used to take people's stuff every day, sell them drugs, any way they wanted to get some money. See, I was about that. See, I didn't care. See, because I didn't dig, you know, the end results of it. Just like you can't dig it. You was like that. And see, you got a problem, my man. Your, is your fucking arm broke? Mm. Come on, one of the fucking wall. What, do you think you're tough or something? Yeah. What's your problem? Yeah, get up. That's what you want to do? Yeah. You want to impress them? Get the fuck up. Tell you what, you tell me, you act like you don't want to Stand up there and tell, tell me what the fuck goes on in here. Tell, them, tell me, don't waste my time, tell me. See, because you're not paying attention to what I'm trying to tell you. I'm paying attention. Oh, all that movement is paying attention. Didn't I tell you to sit your goddamn ass down there and don't take your goddamn eyes off me while I was talking to you? Just because you spoiled me, I'm gonna body slam your ass down here. Mm. See, this is the class clown. See, this is just like a lot of you when you be in the goddamn classroom. Don't want nobody else to learn nothing. Want everybody to watch you, make everybody What did he do? He came on. What the fuck? Why do you want to be like that? Sit your dumb ass down. <laughs> and if I gotta turn around and say something to you, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna slide your ass right up out of here. Mm. I mean, just what do you think you'd be doing, taking people's shit out there? Wait a minute, do you just get a kick out of that? This you. Do you just think this is a fucking joke or something? <laughs> take off those goddamn, take them motherfucking shoes off. Give me them shoes. Oh, they robbed me off. Oh, everybody take them off. What the hell is wrong with That's them? how they got this <laughs> nice shit. I <laughs> see what they doing. They be stealing from the people who this come in to get scared straight. Stealing that shit. Yeah, you got them right. I got it. Smart. Them That's why they started this program. Give me all those shoes. Kick them all down. Come on, goddamn. 
act like you changed it to go hang out. You need some help or something? Damn. That's right. Now, I took that. And I know you don't like it. Did you like it because I took your shoe? Well, do something about it. All you got to do is get up and go through me to get it. Nobody else. See, act like I'm that old man in the alley right now. Or act like you want to snatch my pocketbook. See, that's in my pocketbook. Because, see, I know you want your stuff. That shit was dirty as fuck. How did you feel when I took your stuff? Did you like it? Aww. What about you? It looks so innocent, man. How did you feel? Huh? You can't talk? I said, how did you feel? You want to do something about that? <clears throat> Why, Why not? I'm scared. Because of what? See, you're thinking right now. But see, when you be out there running up in somebody's goddamn house, you don't be thinking. See, mm. you don't be thinking about the consequences that you're going to suffer if you get caught. See, because you can't get away forever. All you do is pound it up from day to day. You don't think about them people out there got families just like you that they out there working, trying to bring that money home that you lay out there and mug them, rip them off for. See, you're thinking right now. See, because you know if you get up and touch one of them shoes, I'm going to break my leg off in your ass. Break it off in your see, ass. Ready, you don't want to deal with them consequences. Put my battery don't die. And see, if you really knew what's happening here, you wouldn't want to deal with them neither. Because this ain't nothing. He looks shook as fuck on the right. God damn. You want to be a smart guy? You want to be a wise guy? Let me tell you something. The police can make a thousand mistakes. You can only make one mistake and you're done. Mm. You understand? Ooh. What, am I here to amuse you? Did you smile? Yeah, exactly. My murdering brother. Something's funny? Something's funny, Something funny with you? No. Huh? Huh? Get this smile on your face, bro. Still smile. Let me tell you something. I'll put you for the nose after the pick. If you think somebody's going to stop me from going, for will me for that. Because by the time they get here, it'll be too late. It'll be all over with. Mm. I got so much time they can't give me no more. Oh, you what I'm yes. you? So when you sit there, you keep that smile on your face. Because I'm going to hurt you. All right? Oh, Ooh, that's scary. It's like, oh, yeah. shit, he ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> he going to be mine. I talk to you nice, right? Y'all little bitch asses in we here. We took your shoes. Climbing up. How do you feel about that? You don't like it? But the next time you take something from somebody, you think about that. You got it? You think about that, how you feel now, because that's how they feel. You like to steal? Eh? You like to steal? I got 11 uncles. Do you know how big that makes my family? Big, right? Take something from my family. Let me read in the newspapers that one of my people was ripped off by one of you punks. And I'll be waiting for you right here in this prison. You got that? And then what do you think's gonna happen? Keep that in your mind. Because every one of us have family out there. And if you he think you're tough, dressed. you don't know what to is. I'm bad. You see me, boy? I'm bad. You see that pretty blue eyes of yours? I'll take one out of your face and squash it in front of you. Damn. So you can watch. You see, because I think that you, like this, what I'm talking to you is going on one ear and out the other. That's what it's doing. I don't think you're listening. It's to get in the back, that's what it's doing. What did I just say? So you take one eye out and squish it. Do you think I would? Yeah. You're damn right I would. Are you ready to kill somebody? No. You're ready to do that monkey business you're doing on the street, though, aren't you? You're ready to hang out on the corner, though, aren't you? Yeah. Then you better be ready to kill somebody, because when you're in this place, you got to kill if you have to. When you wake up in the morning, do you think about maybe I have to kill somebody today? No. When I wake up in the morning, I think about maybe I have to kill somebody today. Mm. Do you wake up in the morning and think about maybe I'll be killed today? But it maybe a guy like me will break your face for it, huh? No. When I wake up in the morning, I think about that. Mm. Is that paranoia? Yeah. For you, it's paranoia. For me, it's, it's a life. reality. This is prison. Damn, they spitting. These niggas this spitting. This ain't no playground. We 
play for keeps in here. And your little bitch has to be crying. Good. Come on. You're making Every the group year, look big. <laughs> he's big. We're Hold big. your We're tears in. No, nah, he's spitting out, so I feel the emotion. Let it out. You take something from me, and I'll kill you. And I ain't really bullshit. Damn. Two of you guys, I don't like. You I don't like you. Straight line. I don't like you. You got what? one time to smile at me, I'm going to turn your teeth upside down. Do you understand me? Why you I just got out the whole day, and I will turn your teeth upside down. Do you dig? Yes. All right. I'm going to tell you about the prison. <laughs> I don't like I you, mean, and I don't like you. Show me your shoes. <laughs> show me your shoes. Show me which ones are yours. Tell me. This one is. Which one is yours? Which the what? What move? Purple sneakers. This same one right here. Yeah. You think it's? Send them to me, though. You didn't have. You smiling at me again? I'll knock you in the motherfucking mouth with this shoe. You smiling at me? Oh, that's why I don't like Knock it off. Close your mouth. Why does he keep smiling? Like he, he ain't taking this shit. Think a fuck about you. Nothing. Go home barefoot, you faggot. Everything I tell you today, I'll be on the short to you. And He's still mouth. gonna be coming crime watch when they do the update. Kidnapping. He up here grinning and shit. Arm robbery, conspiracy, breaking the dude's jaw, and breaking his fucking woman both her goddamn arms. Oh shit. Why you got record of this? The fuck what's happening to me? What's going so on? What's happening to juveniles we're concerned about? It's pretty bad what happens to young boys when they come in somebody's prison, ain't it? Ain't it? Yeah. You think that's bad? This is even better. Girls beaten and raped. 18 years old. She been molested 11 times by other women in the prison. Damn. Don't you want to be like her? They talk about getting tough on juveniles. Short. Sure. Dick, get the fuck out of here. Get up and get off the stage for kick. Get your shoes and Ooh. get the fuck out of here. Right now. If I slap your motherfucking hair off your head. <laughs> what? They talk about getting tough on you now. They say, oh, slap you your hair off like your head. head. They gonna send you to an adult prison. But you don't care, man. You don't care. You want to be here with me. You want to be in the cell next to me. He got such a 70s you know, mustache. All about juveniles. How do we know? We were juveniles one time ourselves. Everything that you're doing now, we did it. We didn't get away with nothing. We're here. We so out here. you think you're going to get away with it? Tell me. Nobody know. Listen to our name and the time that we're doing. Listen to it. Give me some names over there in time. 5-5-3-7-2. Five, five, 30 years. 56 or 83, double life. Mm, 52 or 49, life. 56 or 90, 37 years. 5125, 80, 30 years. 54, 9, 3, 6, life, and from motherfucking now on. Mm. Now who know what now on means? From now on. Somebody tell me. Forever till the day I die, that means I'm never going to the street no more. See, I was like you when I came to prison, man. I was wild. Nobody couldn't mm. tell me a motherfucking thing. I didn't want to hear it. I mean, you was breaking you his arm, so you was taking my motherfucking eye right out of my head. Look. You see it? Stab me all up in the front and in the motherfucking back. How motherfucking tough could I have been? Tell me. See, you got that fucked up attitude. You want to be like me. Nobody like him. And the first, sit up, man. Sit up. Oh, shit, his eye is fucked up. You ever see a toy robot? Mm. Well, look at us. That's what we are. But they don't plug us into electricity. They make us move our bells. I hear so many motherfucking bells that when they don't ring, I still hear them ring. Why? Because I was that tough guy. They just split my motherfucking head all over. I got knots, bumps, stitches, and everything. They don't give mm. a fuck about me. If I haul off and hit you in your jaw right now, you think the police will help you? You goddamn right. He just want to do his eight hours and go on. The people that brought you here today, do you think they'll have the kind of job they have and make the kind of money that they make if they ever get any little drunk shit like you're doing out there today? Huh? But you can have the same kind of job. You can make the same kind of money so motherfucking easy right. passing you by. Go to school. Get that education and fill some with this shit out of you. These niggas is See, woke. Your gun ain't gonna tear that 30-foot wall down out there. A pipe is not gonna tear that 30-foot 
fall down out there. But the education just may turn that motherfucker down. Yes. Come here. Preach. Read the heading. Yeah, we got 30 yeah, years the heading up there. Well, why you stabbed to wow. death in cell one. Okay, read from he was stabbed. He was stabbed about a dozen times in the neck, chest, head, and back. Robinson, who was pronounced dead on arrival at Railway General Hospital, was serving a three to five year sentence. That's the scenario. Did the man lie to you when he told you about motherfuckers dying here? Did he lie to you? No. So are we here to bullshit you? No. And why are you here? Them people that brought you here today, as well as we know, you are here because you're coming to fucking prison. You know, when your mother and father have a dog on the street, and that dog constantly pisses on the floor and they can't train it, what do they do with that fucking dog? They get rid of it. Well, don't you motherfuckers have the sense to know that every time you go in that courtroom for a B and E, shoplifting, stealing a car, whatever you do and you're like a dog pissing on that judge's furniture. Mm. Sooner or later, he's going to get tired of looking at you, he's ain't he? What's he going to do with you? Send your ass away. Send you away. But Jews don't think about that. We know what you think. You think you ain't never killing nobody to come to prison. You don't have to kill nobody to come to prison. And the paper showed you, you don't have to be doing 30 years to die in here. That man was doing three to five years. You want to know what he died for? He died for a piece of fucking cardboard. A picture of his woman that he had in his cell that another sick motherfucker wanted and killed him for. Him. What? Please don't think about that. When you look at Y'all gotta kill for better shit. That's wild. What do you see when you look something. at him? A picture? Convicts. You know what know? we see when we look at you? We see ourselves. We see ourselves. So when you look at us, you better see yourselves. Because this is the future for you. Mm. Men on this stage don't know what it's like to hear a dog barking. Men on this stage don't know what it's like to hear a fucking bird chirping. We don't know what it's like to hear a, a car horn honking. But if mm. you ask us what it's like to hear a man getting stabbed to death, we'll tell you about that. Mm. If you ask us what it's like to hear a man screaming because four dudes is fucking him in his ass, we'll tell you about that too. Because mm. we mm. hear that every day. Oh, Lord. Not every day. Anybody sit up. I said, sit up! Go be the one smoke from terrible. playing these games, all I see. Right now, you, come here. Pretty big dude, ain't you? Six foot. Six foot. Hey, that's it. You got your best shot, man. One punch. Punch me in my face. Then it's my turn. No punch. <laughs> Motherfucker, punch! <laughs> Damn! Yeah, you, you kill me. Huh? You kill me. Yeah, you need protection, don't you? Yeah. Come here. Everybody gonna bother you, Steve, with me. Grab that. Grab it, motherfucker! Grab it! Oh, that's what they did this on the other too. This kind of shit ain't going all day in the motherfucking prison and shit. A young, dumb motherfucker that can't make it. So he needs somebody to take care of. You got any cigarettes? Anybody got a cigarette? <laughs> oh my God, this is terrible. You just bought this. I can do bad on my motherfucking self. Go over there with him. You can do bad on my motherfucking His motherfucking manhood, man, just been tested. And he failed. Because he should have punched my motherfucking head off. That's what he should have did, but he didn't. Now he belonged to somebody else. Mm. Like I said before, man, this happens all the time in the prison. The only thing that the prison got to offer is aggravation, humiliation, degradation, alienation. That's mm. all the prison got to give a motherfucker. That is true. Everybody up here, man, got a number. And like it's only fitting that y'all have a number. And until you leave, because this is the shortest prison sentence you'll spend, your number's one. You two, you three, you four, you five. What's your, What's your number? 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 All right, kick it all the way now. What's your number? You, kick it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Speak it up. Six. I said speak it up, looking mouse. Speak it up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. And I want you to have that same number when you walk in that door going down there because I'll be there squatting on you. We don't get paid for doing this. We don't get no extra rewards, no extra benefits, no he nothing. Married. We do this because we want to do it. Because we feel like we might get to you and help you. Now I'm going to pass these cards out. They got phone numbers. Ooh, if you should. have a problem, if you they feel like depressed, enough, you need somebody enough. to talk to, we learned our then lesson. you can call these numbers. If you don't want these cards, don't take them. Because somebody will come down here who will want Yo, man, it's too young to come to anybody's prison. 
Because I don't want to see none of y'all falling in this bullshit that I'm in. Life in 12 years. I'm only 26 years, years old. Mm. It stops right here. My life stops. They put 12 it. years on top of your life. Then. So I'm saying, you got to listen. Is that understood? What you looking at? I've been here seven years and regret every fucking day I've been here. Mm. Why do you think I'm, I'm standing up here putting everything into this here? You know why? If somebody would have done this to me, I wouldn't be here. Mm. Y'all got the best opportunity in the world. Y'all done came in and talked to motherfucking convicts. We telling you what it is. And you got to be a goddamn fool not to take it. You got to be a fucking fool not to take it. They inspired me. I mean, not that I was about to commit a crime, but still. Now I really don't want to. <laughs> like, they spin. See what these little nigglets are talking about now. I don't know. I was just so scared. I don't want to go to one of them things. <laughs> now they switch it And it was saying, like, you know, they were so sure that I was going to wind up in one of them like that. And just scared the shit out of me. And I didn't like it at all. Yeah, she ready to. Uh, I think it will change my life. And we're waiting to go change my life. I mean, I got to cut some of that out. I mean, all is possible. Yeah, I feel way different. The minute I just stepped in the door, one police man told me to stand straight. I just said, I know it right now. I just ain't for me. Damn, you know at the very beginning. I to that door. Oh, yeah, life ain't, this, life's scared. crying ain't for you. You ain't about to love Damn, you're very scared. Oh, we know you're crying. Scared? It doesn't scare me like it's supposed to. Mm. How did you feel during the session? Uh, I was thinking. He is serious, Hillary. A little. Didn't you just tell me two days ago that you wanted to be a professional thief? Yeah. And now? I changed my mind. <laughs> You're really serious? Yeah. You're not putting me on. Mm -mm. What are you going to do now? He looks about 48. What is happening? It's a lot scary. You should already have a family, I'm sir. I'm what's here. I don't know. I'll probably kill myself. <laughs> Okay, don't send them back. They they straight. They straight as an arrow. Now I don't need to be scared no more. Sleeping jail. What's happening? We located all the convicts and juveniles shown in Scared Straight, but the kids of Scared Straight aren't kids anymore. They're now adults, and their lives have gone in many unexpected directions. I take everything, you know. That's what I'm about, you know. I'm about looking for trouble. Parents ran to Jesus. People. Yes, parents. Yes. Parents man who helps people. Yes. is 37, married with two young sons, and loads baggage for an airline. He served in the Navy. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. I'm laughing, but this is really good for him. But chances are, like, if he went I wouldn't have went to Rawway, I'd probably be locked up. I could have been in my grave. Mm. I could be doing the same things that I would I was doing then. You myself, I don't care, cause you know they gotta catch me first. We knew you was a fake. Breaking the law, being the so you didn't even sound fancy. Broke uh, into stores and almost to a point of um, physical harm. I, I was a person that you could be in your in your in your car and I could be in the back seat of your car. What did you think the visit to a uh, Rawway prison would be like? And Troy, you know, first of all, with all the pressure, you guys going the wrong way. And we like, yeah, we going the wrong way. The big prison. It got a little sensitive when they start closing doors. 
and you hear the locks. And when you, it's something else when you watch a door lock and you don't see a man with a key. I walked out, realizing that if I can commit myself to a change in my life, that I will never have to go back there again. Yeah, I went to college there. after, you know, a couple of years. And I was in an auditorium when they had a film, Scared Straight. And I'm sitting here years later, and people were looking at the film and looking at me, looking at the film, looking at me, and I said, oh, my God. And, and they said, wait a minute, that's him. He's in college. Here's a tormented, deranged juvenile, turned straight. I realized through Broadway State Prison from the age of 16, the only person who can make the change for you is you. Yes. Who do you really want to be and how far are you willing to search inside of you to become the best you want to be? It's just Come on, Reverend. the goodness of Jesus <laughs> that helps remove and wash away the troubles of your life. Yes, good for him. Dealing. Laura looks like she's gonna be on drugs, Bucky. Oh, oh God. I really wish she didn't have to show those things. Why do I be knowing shit? I got like a. Lori is 36, married, and has a daughter 17. Lori is on men. And a son 10. She's a bookkeeper for an air conditioning company. What I steal, I need, and I want. Every time I see it, it's more and more disgusting. And she look old. old. It is. It's embarrassing. It's not funny. It's embarrassing. It's sickening. I thought it was just going to be a day away from school. I didn't think we were going to be in the same room with those people. I didn't think they were going to be right on top of me. I could feel their breath still on me when you think about it, how close they were. And when they were yelling, I mean, the saliva coming out, and that's how close they were to you. I didn't put it past one of them to even hurt one of those girls. I don't know. I was just so scared. I don't want to go to one of them things. I don't think I've ever been that afraid in my whole life. Maybe she ain't on drugs, but I'm, I'm suspicious. And since then, I don't think I've ever been afraid. It made me not want to be an idiot anymore, I guess. I think mm. that's when I just started, like, going to school more after that. I started hanging out with different people after that. It wasn't overnight, but, uh... If you hadn't gone to the prison and it was just your parents or... The oh, police, I would have. Who God only knows Or no. the police talking to you like that, do you think you would have changed no for way. two months? No way. No way. No way. Uh-uh. We probably would have gotten worse. Definitely. It's not a life. It really isn't. That's what I tell my kids, you know? You hurt everybody around you, but in the long run, the only one you're hurting really is yourself. If you feel depressed, if you need somebody to talk to, then you can call these numbers. If you don't want these cards, don't take them. Lonnie was released from prison in 1996. He's 47 and has spent 17 of his adult years behind bars. Lonnie is single and works as an apartment rental agent. Well, oh, good for you, Lonnie. My mother died. She was 23. I was eight. I had nobody to guide me, so I started drinking at a young age. I would argue, carry guns, which got me in trouble because one day I shot someone. Mm. If I had never started drinking, alcohol i would have never went to prison i would have never been in tr trouble and i probably would have been a big success yeah. because um i am intelligent but alcohol makes you unintelligent we do this because we want to do it because we feel like we might get to you and help you sometimes we would see 20 30 and 40 kids and we knew that we couldn't save all kids but if we could save one then we knew we've done something right right it helped us to turn our lives around, too. I'm not drinking. I'm not getting in trouble. I have a son who loves me. And every time I hear him say, it's my dad, I mean, it just, psh, I just get a smile from ear to ear. Aww. As long as he loves me, then I'm a success. Worst thing I ever done was rob the store. Angelo was shook. That's an innocent like... little kid. I had the most innocent face, I think. And I was a terror. Angelo, 37, is now a law-abiding family man. Yeah, he looks Mary sick. I knew he was children. gone. He installs floor tile for a living. I started breaking the law from the age of 15 up until, well, up until scared straight. I didn't think of the victims. I didn't think yeah, what I was man. actually doing to them. I think about it now. I was on in people's still houses. Got that you know, Luigi I was a 16-year-old, 17-year-old crazy <laughs> kid. I was in people's houses. I think of somebody being in my house now, and it would drive me nuts. Come here. Read the heading. 
Yep, that's the guy I remember. I didn't know what he wanted, but I was prepared to do what he wanted to do. Well, why you made stand to death in cell block? He's telling you how the guy came into Warway Prison and got killed in prison. Mm. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. I broke the law three times after I visited Broadway. Twice right after, still at the age of 17 and 18. And once about five years ago, I had a disorderly conduct and I did 15 days in the county jail. Mm. It was something that I'm ashamed of. And my wife wanted to tell my kids I was working, my oldest daughter. I said no. And I made her come down and visit me at the county jail with my wife to see me in between a piece of glass and told the daddy he got in trouble. And this is what happens when you, when you do wrong. Much. If I didn't go to Broadway, I think that I would have done hard time. If that one day didn't happen, I might not have my family. And my family to me right now is everything. It's the most beautiful experience in the world. When you look at us, what do you see? What do you see when you look at us? Convicts. You know what we see when we look at Jews? We see ourselves. Joe was in and out of prison most of his life. After serving 11 years for armed robbery, he was paroled. Four months later, in 1993, Joe died of a drug overdose oh, no. at age 43. He left behind one daughter. Somebody asked me to steal a son. I said, good, you know. 39-year-old yeah, Raul is divorced, has a nine-year-old son, and lives with his fiance. He served in the Army and is now a technician at a chemical plant. There were drug-related exchanges, there were weapon exchanges. We were more into uh, gang-type activities. I want you to look at one man and pass down. I want you to see them all. Do you think you were going to go in there and show those guys a few things? Well, I'd probably go in there and mouth off a little and, uh, you know, laugh at them and joke about it. Mm. What the fuck what did I say, motherfucker? Now pick him up and look at him. I wonder him. who went to jail. You think you were scared like during who, that moment? who didn't turn out? Frightened. Uh, I think anybody would. If I tell you again, I'm going to break your fucking neck. That was the turning point right there, by the way. That made the decision for me to uh, go straight. If I, at that time I didn't uh, go through that program in Rawway, somewhere along the line, I probably would be in Rawway. Probably in Rawway myself. Luckily, I uh, got my eyes opened up through this program met this lovely lady uh love her so much i'm Aww. very very happy i'm very, got very a lot happy. of hair on this too uh, can't ask for no more i don't get on my fucking nerves all right i always remember him well if i met one in the street <laughs> if the one that specked my car the cards out my hand uh i would confront him and say how you doing we had a surprise for raul waiting outside of his apartment was willie the convict who scared him straight 20 years ago. Now pick him up and look at him right. Oh, pick man. Oh, this is dope. So, how you doing? Hey, you scared me, man. <laughs> Again? I didn't see you. I saw them cards, man. <laughs> but I ain't picking them up. I'm not picking them up now. No way. Yeah, yeah. I got you that time. Hell oh, yeah, man. <laughs> That's good. That's you ain't really had no trouble since then? No, man. Straight up, straight. That's it. That's it. Just know we did our job then. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Kept you strong, kept you out here. Definitely did the right thing. Job. Yes, definitely. OG. Yeah, oh, I got married. I'm doing all right. That's good. Bought a home, man. You know, so. I learned a lot from it, too, man. But I'm glad to see guys really they paid off. Uh, you know, rolled up since them. Nice right, to see you carry yourself. You man. too, man. Right. Make sure you don't go back either, man. Never. 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 All right. You just stay cool. You too, man. All right. All right. <coughs> we are convicts. Every man you see behind yeah, me is doing over car. 25 years of life. Willie has been out on parole since 1995. He's 45 years old and has spent 24 of his adult years behind bars. Mm. Willie drives a truck during the day and manages a rough clean service at night. He's Go married on, and is devoted to his stepchildren and grandchildren. I ended up throwing my life almost away. I started using drugs and from drugs I went to armed robbery to get those drugs. Mm. That's been my downfall all my life, you know. 
a lot of people have said to me, if it was not for drugs, I probably would have been somebody really important in this world. What keeps you drug free now? Hard work, taking it a day at a time, and the love that I have for my family. The latter part of my incarceration, I found my religion, which is Islam. That has helped me a great deal. I think a lot of these young kids, if they had some sort of God in their lives, you know, it would would probably be a great improvement. I mean, it's it's been moments where I've gotten weak, you know, but um, I just keep pushing. I keep pushing and taking one day at a time. Because it's it's rough. It's rough when you've been doing that all your life and now you try to change at 45 years old. It's Mm. rough. The best memory I have of, of, of Scared Straight was, uh, I think I was kind of upset that day about something. There was something going on that I didn't like. Man, get that fucking camera out my face. I told you to cut it off. And right now, the day that follows me wherever I go, people who have seen that tape, you know, it's that guy that said, get that effing camera out my face. The Lifers program was the most important thing that came out of my prison experience because through that, I became somebody. You know, helping other kids, helping people get their lives together and not end up like me. You know, it was that experience to the Lifers group that I, I think I've cherished for the rest of my life. Sometimes I did things when I was drunk, and I didn't worry about it till the next day. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that, and I certainly don't feel that way today. Marlene is 35, married, and works as a waitress and hostess. She hopes to start a family. I'm watching these people and what's going on here. I thought they were going to be nice to us, you know? Girl! And, and talk to us like friends, you know? We're cool like them. Get the fuck out of here! Get out of Get off this like day, my kid! A couple hours was torture to me. It really was. It made me realize I want to be somebody. Not a drunk, not a druggie, not an inmate. Yeah. I don't want to see none of y'all falling in this bullshit that I'm in. I'm only 26 years old. Robert was abandoned by his parents as a young child and raised himself in the streets. Mm. He's 48 and has a fifth grade education. Mm. If somebody would have done this to me, I wouldn't be here. I wanted to be in a life group program because um, it gave me a chance sort of to give back a little bit to, to society a little bit. You remember the day that we filmed Scared Straight? Yeah. What are your memories of that day? The love, I guess, that the inmate put out for it. I think that took me uh, a little surprised. So what did he get the change for? Is that understood? We really came together on one common ground, stood up, you know, as convicts, came together as people. Robert has spent his entire adult life in prison. In 1991, he was released, only to be arrested oh. six weeks later for sexual assault. Uh, He's now serving on. a 30-year sentence. Oh, damn After I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as, as my personal Savior, I prayed hard to clean me oh, that's from, why you, got you know, uh, what I used to be. My worst fear is, um... That is terrible. That I in this prison. Each and every day I think about that. You know, you're like a package. You know, you die, a black bag come, they throw you in a black bag, and, you know, the next day it's somebody else in the cell. He and, and got the break I That's hope good. I left some type of impression on people that, you know, you know, don't leave me dying here, you know, of all places. Mm. Mm. I feel like oh, your victims. Yeah. I feel sad about them for a while. And I forget about it. Ron is 38 and lives with his wife and nine-year-old daughter. He served eight years in the Navy and now works the night shift as a mechanic at a dairy. Oh, robbed houses, bicycles. Uh, we stole a car once, you know, selling drugs. The more drugs I did and the more I drank, the more of a daredevil, and I didn't care. I got caught for doing a bomb scare in school. See, you got that fucked up attitude. You want to be like me. I remember how they were always picking on me because they thought I was laughing at them, which I wasn't laughing. I got, I have what they call a nervous smirk. I get scared and I, mm. I smirk and things yeah, that they think I'm laughing at them. So I had them all on. Sorry, my phone my is on do not disturb, but my boyfriend has a bypass. So. See, this is the class clown. 
The thing that scared me the most is that they told us the truth about what life is like in a... And they told me if I was there, I was going to be everybody's boy. They just passed me down a line. And that I knew I wouldn't make it. There was no way. It's amazing the impact it does have because you get to see firsthand what it's, what's going on inside. Well, a lot of these people don't see it until they get there. I wanted to show them that I could do better, that I could change my ways. Aww. And if you hadn't gone, what might you have continued to do? I did not do? like it. I would probably <laughs> kept on burglarizing, kept on with the drugs. I did graduate. Uh, four days later, I decided to join the service. I never thought about the Navy before that. Good for him. So yeah, it made me think about what my future was going to be. It definitely affected me because I think about it still to now, even to this day. It makes me want to be in a, a law-abiding citizen. Keep trying, man. Oh. Get out, motherfucker! You think you're the guy? Get out of that fucking bench. Ten years after Scared Straight, we interviewed Ed who was still incarcerated at Rawway. Hey, wow. I do the best I can to serve my Lord and Savior. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, you know, coming from a convict, but that's the way it is, and I have to be truthful about it. I was carrying a gun and drinking at the same time, and I went off the deep end one day, and I went up shooting, and I killed somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, most proud of that I had an opportunity while in prison to do a film like this, like Life Scared Straight, to reach out to youngsters. I mean, it's really something to take a life, now you're trying to give back a life. What I'm least proud of in my life is that, that I hurt my family by committing my crime and wind up losing my wife and my children and everything else that goes with it. You know? In 1996, after serving 22 years in prison for a double murder, and just three weeks before his release from a halfway house, Ed was changing a flat tire when he suffered a heart attack and died. He was 58 and left behind three children. Not everyone was scared straight after mm, the confrontation. I knew this violence. nigga was about to keep I said, How did you feel? fucking up. I said that. You gonna do something about that? The visit to Rawway, did it change you? No. Frank is 36 years old and married with three children. Oh, what He's the now fuck? a shipping supervisor for a textile Frank, shut the fuck up. It did help For you. nine years after his Rawway visit, Frank took illegal bets as a bookie until one day the law caught up with him. All of a sudden, some guy came by my house, and before I knew it, I was in my garage with, like, ten guns in my head. And I was just like, take me, take me, don't you, you know? I give up. A lot of people were doing the same kind of stuff you were doing, a lot of your friends. They went through this program, and they stopped doing them. You didn't. Why you? I was doing it for so long, the money was coming in, I was living pretty good, and I didn't think I was going to get caught. I thought I was, like, uh, invincible. I was going to get away with murder or whatever. You know, I feel like well, it was not murder, probably still in the back of your head. That's just a saying. And, uh, they got me. What do you think would have happened to you had you not been arrested at that time? I could be dead. Uh, um, when I faced it in real life, that's when I stopped. When it happened to you? Because you didn't yeah, want I mean, it. Never, you didn't ever want like that again. to be like them dudes. So they That's did help scared me straight. When, I, when the judge said five years, Trenton, stay prison. And now, I just try to live a good life. Watch my kids grow up, try to steer them in the right direction. The only thing that the prison got to offer is aggravation, humiliation, degradation, alienation. That's all the prison got to give about, brother. Greg has served time for murder, armed robbery, and other crimes. Ten years after filming Scared Straight, we did a follow-up interview with him. He was still in prison. What hurts me the most is since I've been incarcerated, I've lost my mother. And she has been the greatest support that I've had. Your mother can die or your father can die while you're locked up. And that happened to my dad. Well, my grandma that. passed away when he was in jail. Greg has been out of prison since 1996. He's 46 years old and has been behind bars 20 of his adult years. Greg now works as a counselor at a drug rehabilitation center and is earning college credits toward a degree. He has two teenage children. Regretfully, my first major crime was a murder. I destroyed a life. I disrupted a family. That's a huge first crime. And I stagnated and tore my own life apart. 
I think drugs was the primary force as to why I really got involved in all the things that I did. I used heroin, cocaine, uh, I smoked marijuana. Uh, in fact, I did everything. Don't bring to this. I've been shot four times. I've been hit with a hatchet. I've been stabbed with a K-5. Mm. I've been in a running shootout with the police. Uh, as you see here, I have a scar on my face that came from a shootout. Um, I've overdosed three times. What? On drugs. And, um... Don't you die when you overdose? But, yeah, I've been in some close right encounters word. of the worst kind. There's such a difference in you from the time I saw you 20 years ago and the time I saw you 10 years ago. I've been free of drugs since 1994, on the streets since 1996, and this is the longest that I've ever been substance abuse free. Good and I'm having you. the best time of my life clean and sober. Go ahead. Since I've been free of drugs, it feels exhilarating. You know, um, to try to find a feeling word is like almost difficult to find, right? Because it's such a new feeling, right? But I'm getting used to wearing this feeling. Yeah. And I'm fortunate to still be alive today to give some positive back to somebody else that's going to the same path that I had one on. Speak it up. Six. I said speak it up, looking mouse. Speak it up. Patty is a widow raising three daughters. She's 36, works as a waitress, and hasn't been in trouble with the law in the last 20 years. Put no damn tears in your eyes. What the fuck I care about some tears? That you would do illegal things now. I don't. Know. I'm happy I went to the way. Even though I didn't like it, I think that influenced my life. I think it made it better. It did good for me. Girl, open your mouth. I can barely hear you. you Motherfucker punch. Bang! Roy is on a straight and narrow. Roy is 38, lives with his girlfriend, and is an automobile leasing agent. I hung out in the parks, uh, drank a lot in the parks. The only crime that they ever uh, put me down for, and when they said, you're on your way, uh, was conspiracy to a bomb scare. You need protection, don't you? Yeah. Come here. It might go bomb if you stay with me. Grab that. Grab it, motherfucker, grab it! Boy, there wasn't nah, much chance of one of my buddies bailing me out on that one. You just bought this. I could do bad with my motherfucker self. Go over there with him. You belong to him now. After this the experience at the Lifers Group, I uh, lost the girlfriend. I had to put up with a lot of jokes that were not very pleasant. I had to carry a pack of cigarettes just to show that I was worth at least 20 of them. Although Roy uh, remained law abiding after Rawway. He continued to drink. I had an yeah. arrest back in 85 for drunken driving. In 87, I realized that I, I had a drinking problem and uh, it wasn't going to get any better. And I, I, I was might need a little support. So I did go to AA and things had gotten better. How long has it been? Better. So you still Not a drop since 1987. Oh, good, good. Why I am going to no one's prison. I've been through the lifers program. I don't want to be one of the lifers in the program. Mm -hmm. You need the money that badly? Uh, sister, too lazy to work. Ten years after his visit to Rawway, we did a follow-up interview with Ken. Ken what kind of things happened after the Rawway program? Uh, I did a lot of burglaries, mm. uh, a lot of drugs, just a lot of trouble. How do you think the Broadway prison program changed you or helped you? Uh, I don't think it did. Yeah. That's right now. I took that. To get money for drugs, Ken continued to steal and was sentenced to county jail numerous times. Mm. But 10 years ago, he was trying to change. Ken, how you doing now? Great. Ken had been married just three years when in 1995, he died of an AIDS-related illness. Mm. He was 34 years old. Damn. R. I kick ass, yo. And if I get my ass beat, don't mean shit, because, hey, I'm coming back. Awesome. John has transformed himself from a criminal to a Christian. Oh, I know. He works as a male shop oh, mechanic, shit. but he also preaches the gospel and teaches kung fu. John is 35 years old, married, and the father of six children. Yes, John. I committed more crimes than I want to remember 
bro, I had such a string of crying, right, that if I did not com commit a crime the next day, the, what to the me, fuck was, happened to your uh, team, John? I didn't feel that something was wrong with me. It, it, it was a, an adrenaline rush. It was an escape, you know. Uh, but inside, inside nah, here, it was because I had right. a lot of pain. I didn't know how to talk about it. What did you get the last time you got busted? How much money did you get? Twenty goddamn dollars. Damn. Wake up call. If the lifers group was not there to talk to me that day, that time in my life, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you now. I probably would be dead. Ready for back to you got why I is that team so fucked so up though? What happened? Bed. For a while there, they were not that bad in 1978. I down the road. I had a relapse. I had started getting high again. Okay, uh, that explains. I started committing crimes again. I got wrapped up in a big mess. That was like mess teeth everything. Or lost my family, lost everything. Mm. And then I mm. came across the film Scared Straight. Watching Scared Straight the second time scared me enough again in my heart, inside. 110. That where I said enough is enough. It's time to stop playing games. You have to get right. Or this is where you're going to end up. And from that day on, I start rehabilitating myself. I love God above everything. I'm a Christian first. I love God. I love it. Everything I do is flavored uh, mm. biblically. The chances that drugs or alcohol or anything else in, in that vein, uh, can we say zero, <laughs> zero? They, they have about a zero, minus zero chance of entering my life. The desire is not even minus the same. Zero. That is not a thing. I will do those things because it would make the emptiness go away temporarily. But when the high wore off, I was still stuck with the same old me. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, ever since uh, I have uh, my family and those who love me and, and the Lord is in my life, uh, uh, there, there is no void anymore. There is no void. Everybody about to see Good for him. His teeth just really, really day. concerned. I'll see you in the next day in class. You got to do something about them. I have no worries. Either way, if they bother me, I'll get them back. <laughs> Mike is 36 crazy. and a single dad. He works at a milk factory. Sounds like you didn't really listen to the other people who were trying to steer you straight, but when you went to the prison, you listened. You gave me a kick. Plus, I was either that or go downhill and live like that and end up there. Now I have a kid, somebody to love, somebody to work for, and try and bring him up straight and keep out of trouble. He's so cute. Anybody up here, man, got a number. And like it's only fitting that y'all have a number. And until you leave, because this is the shortest prison sentence you'll spend, your number's one. Was getting a prison number so shocking that any of the kids still remember their number? Yeah, I'm sure number? I think it might have been 12. It was. Was it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> wow. Do you remember your prison number? No, I don't remember the prison number. <laughs> you remember that after uh, 20 years. Sure. Wow. Why do you remember that? Because that's how old I felt when I went there. <laughs> I believe it was unlucky 13. You're right. Wow. I think I was 15. I think. You're right. It was the raid. You remember that 20 years later? I remember that number. It, it, it will burn in my mind mm. forever. I believe I was 11. Right on. <laughs> David smiles a lot, which got him into trouble 20 years ago at Rawway. Oh, that the one I am? Oh, yeah. Something's funny. I thought he was going to be a serial killer. He's 37 years old and self-employed as a floor installer. He's a father to his son and daughter and three stepdaughters. At that time, I had availability to the railroad tracks. I would rob off the trains at that time. That so don't look like him at all. all. What happened? If I steal from someone, it would be someone if I ever did steal like the railroad, like I've been blamed for. You weren't acknowledging at that oh, no, time that you even did it. You said, yeah, if I, just, I did. I just acknowledged that I did do no, it. Sure. You know, and uh, at that time, talking like that, I didn't even realize I said all that, you know? They'll have the money right from the insurance, and they just, they just stolen the money. It's no, it ain't What's up with his name? The insurance company, I'm sorry for doing that to you. I am paying the price today. You smiling at me? Knock it off. Close your mouth. I thought going to Broadway State Prison was going to be a joke. Go home there, you faggot. The number one thing I got out of it was a wake-up call. 
to show me another side that I, I another door that I never looked into. And I've been on the outside of that door, and I got a chance to see going inside that door. They stopped me from stealing. I mean, from that point, I didn't steal. Because I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. My whole life changed. I joined the army. And then a lot I, of them joined the army. I think you're like the second or third one. Divorce and another family. Oh, good hit. I can give that film a lot of credit for helping me. And my friends. Good. Because we all look at each other and, you know, we know who the scared straight people were. And, and from what I could see, it, it helped them very well. It, it helped, helped all most of, us. of them. So I always think, scared straight 78, I always remember. I always remember that all my life. That's why they tried to bring it back. They was like, hey, we were saving lives up out here. Dominic was a repeat offender. His crimes ranging from drug distribution to murder. Ten years after Scared Straight, we interviewed him inside a federal penitentiary. Does it make you feel good to know that Scared Straight has been seen by millions of people, really helped a lot of kids, and you were part of it? Is that true? Yeah, that's true. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how many millions of people have seen it, as long as the right people have seen it. Okay. In 1990, Dominic was released from prison. Three years later, at age 42, he died, he died of AIDS. Damn. How old were you when you first got into trouble? About third grade. <laughs> Tony is 36 years old and single. He has worked as an oh, electronics technician <laughs> and now owns a printing business. Tony also is a licensed pilot. We stole yeah, smaller things, whatever it might have been, car radios, maybe a car here and there. Beer was forbidden to us and alcohol, so we got as much as we could of it. And uh, once you pass that stage, then you tend to go out and do these little malicious things that teenagers in groups tend to do. Single file. Yeah. We were the tough guys on the block. We didn't expect anything to happen. So we're going to go in here. It's a day off school. We're going to laugh and, you know, play around and, you know, go back and tell everybody that we made these guys look dumb. <laughs> Take off your goddamn. Take the motherfucking shoes off. Give me them shoes. I have never untied my shoes faster in my life <laughs> and threw them out on the stage. And the guy said to us, you've just been ripped off. How do you feel? And I remember how I felt. I was more terrified from the size of these guys than just taking off my shoes. Two things scared me the most about the prison scene, uh, and they go hand in hand, the size of the inmates and their uh, sexual preferences. Mm. <laughs> and they go hand in hand because if it was just a sexual preference and you could fight it off, it would be fine. But uh, these guys seem to do nothing but lift weights all day, and I don't think you'd get out of their grasp. And I just don't you travel in those rate. directions. So. Mm. I was humbled. You know, we thought we were tough. They were much tougher than we were. That was the, the most uh, immediate and somewhat profound effect that it had on me. <laughs> if he I said, had not fuck that, I ain't getting asked for it. I may not truly have understood the consequences of some of these crimes. And I may have taken a chance at committing a higher crime. And that, of course, would have destroyed my life. Right. Now you if there's anything playing. that I could Good really job. accomplish in life, I, I think I'd like to be a renowned novelist. I would like to be someone who people could look at and say, you know, he was a kid and he was in trouble, and look at him. I mean, he actually reached the level of being one of the great literists in the world. Of course, I'm reaching, but I mean, that would be just something, just awesome. The group's gonna do something like I'm the kind of person that probably. Oh, Ron is them. straight, straight. Ron he is was crying his ass off. Ron is a longshoreman and a landscaper. Mm -hmm. He's also a newlywed. The mm -hmm. best thing about my life is um, probably finding happiness with somebody else. <laughs> That's a whole new life beginning now. They're gonna kick your ass over the side of that bed and do bodily harm to your asshole. It was scary. I mean, it was intense. <laughs> yeah, and young kids and. You know, you're getting whistled at and yelled at and told profanities that they want to do to you. It's, 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 uh, you know, you leave there with a whole different outlook. That haunted him. Without a doubt, going to the prison definitely kept me from getting in more trouble. I didn't th always think this either, to tell you the truth, that it was uh, a good thing in the beginning because of the negative 
reaction I got from all the kids. Mm, oh, you had know, tears in your eyes, you know. Uh, I would have went there and told them off. I was spitting his face. Yeah, well, I had no idea what really prison was until that day. Really prison was. Well, it scared out of me. <laughs> Going to school and they like, ah, oh, you was crying, old bitch. Only one of the 17 juveniles became a career criminal, and he's the only one who is now a prisoner. Ironically, 20 years ago, Kadir predicted his future. In my future, I think I'll be a professional thief. Kadir's career of choice has resulted in six convictions totaling 15 years behind bars. He's now 39 years old. In 1994, he was sentenced to 10 years for armed robbery and burglary. Mm. Although Kadir has five living children, we were his only visitors in five years. Mm. First time I've ever gotten in trouble. I was eight years old. It was basically burglaries, stealing cars. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we met, I think I was attempting to steal your equipment. I'll take everything you have if you give me the chance. Of all the kids who went through the program the day we filmed Scared Straight, you were the only one who wound up going into maximum security prisons. Mm. Why you? Drugs. <laughs> it's always a result of drugs. I've never done anything when I was sober or clear-headed, so I would have to attribute that to drugs. I've been using drugs for over 17 years, be it uh, cocaine or heroin or crack cocaine. Mm. I'm not proud of it. It was something like I just had to have it. Ten years ago, like now, Kadir was the only scared straight juvenile in prison. And at that time, Malik was the only lifer out on parole. Malik decided to pay Kadir a surprise visit to find out what went wrong. How are you doing, man? You know me? Y'all should have slapped him around a little bit. Apparently, he must have forgotten me. And everything that I've said to you as well. Yes. <laughs> I never wanted to come back inside no prison, you know, under no circumstances. But out of the fact that they said that you were here, right, it made me a little bit like, wow, where did we mess up? This is most definitely my last time coming through anybody's prison. I have six kids out there. I want to be with them. I miss their youthful years, mm -hmm. but I'm going to watch them and be with them in their teenage years. What happened after that? That was my uh, true intentions at the time. Uh, I got out. I did good for about six months, and I just ran astray again. Today, I'm drug-free. Mm. I've been involved with AA for eight years. I'm going to continue with it. Malik, once again, is an inmate, now in the same prison as Kadir. We arranged yeah. for Malik to pay Kadir another surprise visit. They have not seen each other in over 10 years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, it's a man. How you doing, man? How about yourself? I'll tell you, I'm trying to make it kind of surprised to see you. Uh, same. Yeah. Thought you was out there doing well. I was. Uh, well, except for allowing myself to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I know it's kind of hard for me to uh, tell you how could you and be sitting in the yeah. right. same place. And I can't keep doing this. Yeah, it's just sheer madness. Uh, we destroy our own families yeah. and we become the jail. All right. Though I said it 10, 12 years ago, today I know I'm getting too old for this. Tired, my children are grown. Uh, I don't have this life in me no more. I'm, I'm tired of it. In 1995, Malik was sentenced to five years for possession of stolen property and violating his parole. He's 49 years old and has spent 22 of his adult years behind bars. This is his sixth time in prison. Mm. When we came on the stage, the things that we Six were telling were life experiences, Ooh. all the brutality. The loneliness, right? The crying, all right? The sorrowful moments, the longing to be other places, all that is very real. I think that's one of the hardest things about dealing, right, with prison life is for a parent 
to have children and not be able to come to their aid. Malik's two older sons are both in prison. Jamal is serving 22 years at Rahway for aggravated manslaughter. Ironically, he is now part of the Lifers group. This is the first time a father and son have both participated in the program. I feel real bad about my two sons. I feel as though I failed them. When I look back when they were younger, when they was between the ages of seven and 12 years old, I would take them places with me while I was doing criminal things. Oh my God. And I was involved in selling drugs and everything for a period of my life, using drugs, uh, doing armed robberies, carrying pistols. So all those things that they remembered me doing and hearing people talk about me doing, they wanted to become a part of. The first time getting caught, Getting involved with the criminal That's system. Eight years old, nine years old, malicious damage. After that, attempted robbery, burglary. By the time I realized that it was wrong and I was trying to steer them away from it, it was too late. That's how my father is so wonderful because he was reaching out to us even though he was locked up. I'm grateful that my son has finally came into himself, Jamal, and is working with the Lifers Group because I know that has helped me immensely, so I'm sure it's going to be of some service to him. Now in his 23rd year, the Lifers Juvenile Awareness Project is still going strong at East Jersey State Prison, formerly Rawway. See that wall over there? about this individual. Out of 384 young people, youth that I've brought, there have only been 57 thus far that have continued uh, any sort of antisocial or delinquent acts. Over the years, I've taken about 300 kids to uh, roll away to the lifers group. And of that 300, about 80% of them turned their lives around. Yes. If it wasn't for that roll away experience, I would say the success rate would be 20 to 25%. Prison is like a big monopoly city. The only thing about this big monopoly city, you don't get no get out of jail card free. Did everybody smile? Please? Good. Recently, a group of the scared straight juveniles got together for a reunion and photo session. <laughs> One thing they all agreed upon was the convict who scared them the most. Oh, don't the eye. God, I remember that guy like it was yesterday. 
I remember there was one guy who was missing an eye. A guy who only had one, one eye. <laughs> uh, the guy with the eye, because he was right on our face. Do you know how they showed me? By taking my motherfucking eye right out of my head. Look! He had stuck in my mind, you know, seriously. That one prisoner for 20 years, he had stuck in my brain. And every time I think of Rawway or Scared Straight, that's his face. I see his face. My head. If I saw him, I don't know. I don't know what I would do if I saw him. I really don't. <laughs> he wants a compatible visit. This is hilarious. I'm here for murder, kidnapping, robbery. I'm here for murder. Oh, kidnapping. Oh, he's all skinny and old now. Conspiracy. Breaking the dude's jaw and breaking his woman both her arms. Like I said before, I'm not your friend, I'm not your enemy. I'm not your mother, I'm not your father. But I'm glad to see all of y'all today. And I hope you feel the same way about me. All right? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. You doing all right? Are you still scared? No, sir, I'm not in jail. I've been out of jail since 1990. And I haven't been back to jail for anything. Out of all the guys in the lifers group, I mean, you weren't anywhere near as big as some of those other guys, but still, you came across. Of course. I mean, in my memory, you're the person yeah, that I remember. Yeah, I remember. Well, that's because I had that anger in me. Today, I don't have that anger in me, you know. I couldn't stand nobody to look at me. I asked them, what the hell are you looking at? I'll be ready to fight. I don't care if you're seven feet tall, I'm going to try you. You can see all I was stabbed, yeah, yeah, yes yeah. I was. Remember you can still see all the scars. See? I'm not jiving, you know. This is me, I'm for real. Once I started dealing with the lifers group, I started looking <laughs> Look within at myself, you know, saying, damn, I can help them, but why can't I help myself? Yeah. You know? I hope you realize that staring right in front of you is uh, some people of the people that I helped. helped 20 years ago. <laughs> right. and me, myself, and I'm sure everybody, I really want to thank you. Hey, right. I appreciate oh, that. Sure. You know, thank, by thanking me, what you do is you talk to him. And I know a few of y'all have kids and everything. And uh, please treat him better than I did mine, because I wasn't there for him. You're here for them, man. Right. Please right. stay here for him. All right? All right. Bye bye, man. Ali is 53 and has spent 20 of his adult years in prison. He recently remarried and is the father of six adult children. Yeah. Ali works as a mechanic and volunteers his time helping kids in trouble. I was a drug addict. I drank a lot of alcohol. Damn, I could really see I used his, to stay high all the time. It was hard to stay see on that 1973. Getting in trouble, falling in the gutter, spitting up on myself and everything. But I stopped. I don't do drugs. I don't drink alcohol. So far, knock on wood, I hope I can stay that way. Yeah. 34936 life and from motherfucking now on. The saddest thing about a man being in prison is when he loses family. He don't have nobody to come home to, nothing to really look forward to. I know it sounds like, um, you know, I want to cry, but I do, because it really hurts. Jail is so easy to but get into, but it's so hard to get out. You're young one day, and at the end of 30 years, you got gray hairs. Mm -hmm. You say, what the hell happened to me? Mm -hmm. Since I came home, everything has changed, you know? I have a beautiful family. I have everything I want. I have kids that I love, I respect, you know, and, and they respect me. And I love myself, you know, from the time then until the time of now. I love me. Yeah. What are the chances that you would break the law again? And... Zero. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Some if I break the law again and commit another crime, you can hang me. I'm not going to ruin my life. Believe me. It's over. My life with crime is over. Go to school. Get that education and fill some of this shit out of me. I was in a lifers group for the complete 19 years that I was in the prison. I think we touched a lot of kids, man, you know? And uh, I've seen the results after 20 years. And uh, that made me feel good. I still say the same thing I said 20 years ago. Please don't follow in my footstep. If you have a family, man, praise them, man. Stay with them. Keep them out of trouble. Don't let them do the same thing that you did. That's what I would tell you. And I'd be right there in your face and tell you. Even if I had to grab you in your shirt collar to tell you, I would do that.
Both the lifers and the kids we met verify the tragic reality that drug and alcohol abuse play a significant role in crime. So as violence, drinking, and drugs continue to destroy our children, we should use every resource available to stop young people from hurting themselves and others. The more than 50,000 kids who have been through the LIFERS program have shown that dedicated prisoners can help stop today's kids from becoming tomorrow's convicts. Yes, Danny Glover, you tell us, tell us. Bruh, I'm inspired. I'm inspired to continue being a law-abiding citizen, all right? <laughs> Granted, I wasn't gonna do shit anyway, but this just really solidified it. Like, nah, I ain't about this booty rape life. I ain't about, you know, being in jail forever and you know watching my back nah this is this ain't it this ain't it everybody out there get your shit together stay on the straight and narrow every last one of these prison inmates they all regretted it they all was like damn i wish i never did this damn i wish i never was on drugs I w you know nobody wants to be in jail and live in this life like this shit ain't this shit ain't it so this was a really cool video i feel more inspired than i did you know for the other one the 1998 one like they was really dropping them gems you know and the things that they were saying so this was really inspirational i liked it a lot cool video y'all let me know what y'all thought about this long ass video <laughs> let me know what other videos you want me to react to and i'll see you guys in the next one